Hey everyone, Pete here. Now I don't know if I've got a problem at all, but I'm making another CNC machine. This time a smaller version of the Route 4 based on the Route 3 Lite. So kind of that small scale CNC vibe. So come along with me and we'll go through building one. So you might be wondering why I want to build another CNC machine and the main reason is one because I want to and two I've designed this Gerbil ESP32 CNC controller based off the good work Bart and his team have been doing. Uh, I'd highly recommend going and check his channel out and uh, his GitHub page because they're doing some great development on this sort of stuff and this controller will use their firmware so yeah definitely go and check them out. But what it is is a uh, fully isolated Gerbil controller with the ESP32 as the processor. Now this is really intended to drive the bigger ones with the external step motor drivers but for this configuration we won't be doing that but uh, I think this will require its own video in its own right but yeah this is the main reason why I wanted to build another CNC machine. Um, I'll get it, prove it's working fine on the little one and then I'll transplant it into the big one because I've got some issues with Marlin and just odd issues that I can't solve so hopefully this will solve it all. I can drag and drop the uh, CNC files from the computer over Wi-Fi and just uh, mitigate the need of a laptop. So this is one of the reasons. Secondly, I wanted a CNC machine that had ball screws on all axis. So hopefully this one should be quite a good fun build to make. Stay tuned. So let's go through some of the parts we've got here. Now, the carriages are the same ones used in the Route 3 light. So if you're upgrading from Route 3 light to Route 4 light, you can reuse your carriages. Likewise for the feet, they're just um, the same part, albeit the logo stamped on the back. Um, the um, belts, as you can see, it's still got the um, grooves for the belt, but they're no longer needed as the uh, ball screws will mount on top of these. You'll see in the video how these mount. They're a little bit tricky to get the um, bearing and the motor installed, but um, it is doable. Um, most of the parts from then on are replaced. So the um, Y axis, sorry, X axis uh, box section supports are different, unfortunately. Uh, I did want to keep these the same, but we just couldn't accommodate the um, proper um, ball screw mounts, these fellas here. Um, keeping on with the theme of the linear guide rails for the Z-axis, it's no different on this one. So this has deviated from the original Route 3 light, uh, whereas now we use some linear guides for the Z-carriage. This is a bit of a um, tricky piece to assemble, so we'll see how that goes. It is doable, but just going to be tricky. So with this build, I wanted to get away from the DC quiet spindles because let's be honest, they're all a bit rubbish and actually go for a proper VFD in this build. Um, it's been a bit of a squeeze to get this all to fit in, but with the ball screw on the Z axis as well as the um, large spindle, it should be uh, good enough to uh, hold it all. And on the side, you might notice some accessory rails. So one thing that I found really good on the Route 4, the big one, is the... Um, dust shoe over there um, that is an independent height dust shoe whereas on this one we're going to have a dependent height so as it goes up and down the dust shoe goes up and down with it um, there's nothing stopping you put in a laser on there or, or anything else but uh, yeah I wanted a uh, dust shoe on this because it makes <laughs> doing jobs so much better when there's no mess to clear up the uh, you, the part for that is still on the printer so to other rails that go up and down, but it's not really part of the core build, it's an optional extra, so um, it's not included here. But yeah, certainly you can print your own and add that on. Going along, we're still using our 2020 uh, aluminium or steel box section. This is a two mil wall thickness. Um, I believe the sizes are different from the Route 3 light, so if you are upgrading, you will need some newer, newer box section, as I've tried to maximize the most I can get out of uh, the ball screw travel so get as much working area from a given length as possible we've got the standard uh, ball screw blocks standard drag train some end stops as this is a budget build 
I wanted to use the uh, standard end stop switches rather than the uh, inductive sensors. Ball screws, uh, I forgot the length of these but they'll be in the bomb uh, and matching um, bearing blocks. Um, these are becoming increasingly difficult to find so hopefully they, they aren't something that goes obsolete or anything but uh, yeah these are the slightly smaller variants than the ones used on the big machine over there on all axis. To save costs uh, we haven't gone for the floating side instead we've got our own 3D printed blocks that hold the uh, floating side bearing they're only there to stop the uh, ball screw from whipping around so we can make our own. And we've got some new couplers and we've got our Gerbil ESP32 controller. So the goal with this CNC was to try and have a budget of £550 for the whole lot. Now some of it is dependent on this controller, um, the prototype did cost, cost quite a bit of money. So £550 is the goal and I'll tally it all up at the end and see what the actual price was. But I think if you went for an Arduino based one you probably could do this build for under £500. And that is including the VFD, ball screws uh, and the linear guide rails. Uh, moving on to the baseboard um, and the side panels, these were created on the Route 4 CNC machine. Um, you can see a video now of how they were made. Likewise with the Route 3 Lice and any of the other parts, they will be available in the store, so check them out if you want to get your hands on some of them. This build will be purely NEMA 17s only, so you can see the uh, stepper motors have got lined up ready there. Now I don't need all of them, I just brought a pack of six. Um, so I am tempted to put a fourth axis on this and give it a go. Uh, I've got one mocked up and I think this control is perfect for it. So these are the parts. One thing that isn't on the uh, on the table is uh, fixings. Um, I've got my DIY cabinet over here with them all in. So as I go through, I'll kind of keep notes of what I've used and tally them all up. If you want to know how I made this, there is a video uh, on my channel. Uh, there should be a link in the description below. Check it out, it's quite a good, uh, easy watch. And if you want to make your own, the files are available to download. And it's got a full extendable drawer. All right, back to the build. I think it's time to start assembling. To assemble the carriage all you need is some M5 by 20mm hex bolts, some M5 washers and some M5 lock nuts and the bearings to go with it and I'll show you how to assemble it now. So I've just been and got some more washers. Oh.
So this is what we've done in this episode. This is the finished article for the X-axis and Z carriage. Uh, I think we've got a good amount done today. Um, stay tuned for more as we continue the build.